Hello everyone, my name's Tim and this is a Silver Coda and this particular video is um, partially a result of a blog article I wrote last week where I described Pascal as deserving a second chance and so from that video, I, I, or from that blog, sorry, I said that Pascal is a readable language, or it's a, it's, I'm going to say, let's say, because it is, let's say, more verbose than some other languages, um, in the fact that it uses, you know, let's say, the full name function rather than fun, or it might use curly braces rather than a, um, sorry, it uses the begin end rather than curly braces, uh, that, you know, let's say, makes it seem, uh, let's say, old and doesn't look like a programming language, if that could be said. So what we're going to do here is to look at a very small program, a very simple program, that we're going to call a task manager. And what we're going to do is to show you all the different parts that could be part of a any program that you w might write in Pascal. So. So a program will begin with the um, word program followed by the program name and then a program will end with a lot, you know, well basically it'll have a begin here and then the end statement with a full stop afterwards. Um, <coughs> the uh, normally the first section you would have after the program name is a users section. Now the user section specifies other units which are required for the program to build and to function correctly. So in our particular case we need the sysutils unit and strutils. If I were to take out the um, sysutils unit and I try to build the program uh, it you know throws an error saying that it cannot find some identifiers. One of these being date to string and the, and and an encode date function. So basically, in order for it to be able to uh, call date to string or encode date, it needs to know where the implementation of that particular function is. And in this case here, like I said, it comes from sysutils. Um, the next section um, would be constants. So constants are um, values which are used throughout the program whose value typically won't change. Uh, while you may have writable constants, we're not going to worry about that here. Um, so with when we use a constant, I can refer to max tasks here and it knows that the value will be 100. Uh, w if I wanted to have, let's just say, a, an array of 100 tasks and I were to specify the value 100 throughout the program, if I then wanted to change the array to handle, let's say, 200 or 1000 elements, I'd have to edit all the instances where that value was used. Uh, here, if I want to change the uh, size of the array, I can just, you know, change it in one location. and on rebuilding the program then you know it gets reflected throughout accordingly so that's so here we have like I said a section of our constant values types um, are, are things like um, uh, other custom data structures for a program it may be a in this case here a record structure it may be a class um, it may be an enumeration and if we were to look in, uh, let's go, let's go to the STA utils, for instance, and we look at what types we have here. Let's just go up to the top. Uh, we've only got functions here. Um, let's go to maybe we'll have a look in sys. Let's have a look in sys utils. Um, so here we've got a system time as being defined as a window system time. We've also got a, an exception class here and these are all types. Or well, both these are, are types which we um, define so we can use it in our program. 
uh, in our case here we're defining a task as containing a title, a due date and a completed field which is a boolean true or false Having a type, um, we want to be able to do something with, let's say, that uh, task. And so what we will do then, uh, we can then create uh, functions or uh, procedures which will operate on a task. Or in this case here, we're going to be looking at an array of tasks. Um, and typically you'll find that we will write a procedure or a function or a method in the case of a class that will uh, perform you know one job so in this case here we've got um, procedures add task display tasks and complete tasks and they will each perform that particular function a procedure then is uh, denoted by the word procedure followed by the procedure name and then we have the parameter have the parameters which are, you know, are used by a program or get passed into this particular function in order for it to be called um, so here we'll have like an array of tasks how many there are at the moment and uh, what's the title and the due date of the new task and providing we have less than um, the maximum number of tasks, the task gets added in um, otherwise an error message gets displayed you will find that uh, if a procedure has any variables of its own that it needs then they will also, they will be con you know specified um, just above the begin statement so we have a procedure has a code block and the code block here are the instructions um, to be performed when we want to, in this case here when we want to add a task here I'm um, in the display tasks you know we have uh, let's say um, three sections because we've got the um, parameters is part one we've got variables which is part two and then we've got our code block which is part three and what it will be doing is iterating through the tasks and displaying information about them so I mentioned above you know um, about having a variable section now variables are uh, values or memory addresses whose values can change throughout the lifetime of a program so in the example of when we uh, want to add a task into a task list then we want to uh, update that array and we're also going to be increasing the task count by one here, uh, so we can see here we've got a write line state, it'll write out this message here, it'll add a, ta um, a couple of tasks into a list and then it will display those tasks. Um, we'll come to part two in a moment, so why don't we run this program now? Now you can see here that it says the, has that welcome message and then it uh, shows you what the tasks were that were added and now it's going to ask us to enter a task to mark as completed and it uses the read line to uh, function call to get the number from the user. Now if I were to enter say a string value uh, w it will uh, raise an exception and, uh, and that will result in the program going down into an accept block and this is um, our part of our error handling where something which we don't expect to um, occur you know will be you know caught and you know an error message can be displayed but assuming they enter the a number between uh, the one and the task count, 
then the item would be marked as completed. So let's just put in here 2 and now when the list gets displayed again you can see that you know item 2 which was uh, incomplete is now marked as completed. Again, if I did put in a string value, then the uh, an exception would get raised because you cannot store a string value into an integer field here. Do you have any questions about um, you know, programming in Pascal? Feel free to leave a comment or uh, send me a message uh, and if you like this video um, please don't forget to hit that like button you can share it with your friends uh, s subscribe to my channel you know if you found this video helpful and until next time happy program and I'll see you then bye